My name is George McAndrews, attorney for the plaintiffs. This is a test. My name is Doug Carlson. My name is Doyle Taylor. This is a test. My name is Kent Carter, the court reporter. My name is James Cherney. My name is Douglas Polk. And my name is William Tabor, and this takes the test. This is the videotape deposition of H. Doyle Taylor, taken by the attorney for the plaintiffs in the matter of Wilk et al. versus American Medical Association et al. Held at 2700 North 3rd Street in Phoenix, Arizona on Tuesday, April 28, 1987, at the time indicated on the video screen, which is approximately 9.45 a.m. My name is Kent Carter, and I am the court reporter. The video technician is Herb Smith of McVeigh Reporting Service. Counsel will now introduce himself. I am George McAndrews, attorney for the plaintiffs. My name is Doug Carlson. I represent the witness, Mr. Taylor. I also represent defendants Sabatier, Valentine, Sammons, and American Medical Association. My name is James Kearney. I represent defendant American College of Radiology. My name is Douglas Polk. I represent defendant American College of Surgeons. My name is William Tabor, representing the American Medical Association. Mr. Taylor, if you'll raise your right hand to be sworn, please. Do you solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Uh, Mr. Taylor, uh, we took your deposition once before, and uh, this time we're uh, using a, a videotape so that the judge sitting in Chicago, Judge Getz and Danner, can see the interaction of the attorneys and, and the witness. Uh, would you state your full name and your age, please? My name is H. Doyle Taylor. I am 71 years old. And are you a resident of uh, Arizona? I am a resident of Sun City, Arizona. For how long a period of time have you been a resident of Arizona? Since 1981. Okay. Since 1981, have you been back to Chicago? Yes. How many times? Two or three. I have a son who lives with his family in Oak Park. And have you and your wife traveled to Chicago during that period of time? Two or three times by air. All right. Uh, when is the last time you were in Chicago? Last summer. I was not in Chicago at any time during that trip, however. We were at Oak Park all the time. Oak Park, all right. Uh, you are an attorney, are you not? I am. Are you admitted to any bar? Iowa. And when were you admitted to the Iowa bar? In October of 1939. Uh, did you ever uh, actively practice law in... I don't want to cut hairs here. Uh, lawyers never stop practicing law, but... Uh, For a short period of time, I was a, uh, an associate in a law firm identified as Schweitzer, Jackson, Crawford, and Guestford in Des Moines. I worked at the law firm during the daytime, and I worked at Des Moines Register and Tribune at night for about a year when I found you couldn't burn the candle at both ends and I was far enough along in the newspaper business that I decided that's where I was going. All right. And uh, was that about 1940? Yes. All right. For how long a period of time did you work in the newspaper business? Until I went to the American Medical Association in January of 1965. Am I correct? That's approximately 20 years? I worked for the Des Moines Register and Tribune for 35 years, starting when I was 14. Oh, and, and uh, you worked for them while you were going to law school? I worked for them while I was going to high school, through undergraduate school, and law school. Right. Uh, was your brother affiliated with the Iowa Medical Society? My late brother was affiliated with the Iowa Medical Society. What was his Society. position? Would you give his name, too, please? His name was Donald L. Taylor. What was his position? Executive Vice President of the Iowa Medical Society. All right. Did you know Mr. Throckmorton? Yes. Who was Mr. Throckmorton? Mr. Throckmorton was ahead of me in law school by one year and was had the reputation of being the finest law student that the Drake University had ever produced. I did not know Bob and Mr. Throckmorton personally, although I did 
study with his class, did some review work with his class, and became acquainted with his brilliance because the dean had asked me or recommended that I take the bar in October of 39, regardless of the fact that I did not get my degree from Drake until June of 1940. I got to know Bob very slightly during that review period. I had not known him before at all. Okay. Did Mr. Throckmorton, uh, to your knowledge, become uh, general counsel of the Iowa Medical Society at a certain point in time? Yes, but I don't know when. All right. Uh, did your, uh, uh, when did your brother, was it Don? Yes. Become executive director of the Iowa Medical Society? I would just have to guess. I, uh, 1944 or 45. Was he uh, executive director of the Iowa Medical Society in 1962? Yes. Okay. Oh, was Mr. Throckmorton uh, legal counsel of the Iowa Medical Society in 1962? I don't know. All right. Uh, when did you uh, first have a working contact with Mr. Throckmorton? When I had received a telephone call from him sometime in the fall of 1964, asking me if I'd be interested in coming to the American Medical Association. Okay, by this time you had worked for the uh, Des Moines Register for 35 years. Uh, did he tell you what your job what was to be at the American Medical Association? <clears throat> I had been offered several jobs at the American Medical Association. Jim Reed, who was head of the communications division, was an acquaintance of mine uh, for many years because he was a pre he was the he ran the news bureau at a college and I ran the news bureau at Drake University. And I was elected president of that association of news bureau directors and Jim was responsible for that. I'm sorry, I've wandered. Uh, would you repeat your question, Mr. Sanders? Uh, yes, uh, when Mr. Throckmorton invited you to go to Chicago and work for the AMA, did he tell you what your jobs would be, or job? I told him that I had turned down several offers of jobs by Jim Reed, and he said, well, may I come out and see you? I'll be, I'll be home during the Thanksgiving holiday period. And I said, yes, but this is strictly between you and me. I, am, I don't want anybody at the newspaper to know that you're even talking to me about a job. Did Don know about it? To my knowledge, no. Right. And then what did Mr. Throckmorton tell you he wanted you to go to the AMA to do? Uh, to become director of the Department of Investigation. Did he tell you what that was? Yes. Uh, he said that was a position that required, in his judgment, a lawyer with considerable editorial expertise and considerable public speaking expertise. And he thought he could find nobody who had those qualifications any better than I had. Was the subject of chiropractic raised at that first meeting, to your knowledge? He told me that the uh, <clears throat> Department of Investigation was responsible for investigating all types of quackery, for example, all types of malfeasance by physicians, and basically the, the basic premise of the Department of Investigation in Performing these activities was to protect the health of the public of the United States, which is one of the prime goals and always has been of the American Medical Association. All right. Uh, you may have answered my question, but I'm not certain you did. You said he said you would be responsible, or the, the Department of Investigation was responsible for all types of quackery. Did the word chiropractic come up during that discussion? Possibly. Probably. Did you understand that your, when you went to the AMA that your uh, primary area of your responsibility would be the subject of chiropractic? Certainly not. All right. Uh, 
Did you do you know whether or not Mr. Throckmorton, while serving as uh, legal counsel of the Iowa Medical Society, concerned himself with the subject of chiropractic in Iowa? I have read a paper from your exhibits, uh, which he gave at a meeting in of the uh, North Central Medical Association, I believe is, is the name of the group. It's a group of state medical societies that meets at least annually. Okay. When is the first time, uh, uh, were you through with your answer? Yes. When was the first time you saw that paper? When I was, uh, I, I'm not certain, Mr. McAndrews. I may have seen it when I was reviewing the papers in Mr. Carlson's office prior to the 1978, I believe it was, deposition. Right. And when was the last time you saw that document, if you can recall? Uh, last weekend. Okay. Did you review documents last weekend in getting ready for your deposition? Here? I skimmed through the exhibits. All I right. did not, I, I don't believe I read a single one. All right. Uh, let me hand you Plaintiff's Exhibit 172, which has uh, previously been identified. And is that the uh, uh, document by uh, Mr. Throckmorton that you recall uh, having reviewed? Uh, yes. Okay. And uh, let me be a little more specific. Uh, is it your statement that you may have reviewed this back at the time you went to work for the AMA? No, I did not. All right. When is the first time you reviewed it? Just prior to your deposition? Just prior to my deposition. All right. As uh, far as I remember. All right. Did Mr. Throckmorton uh, uh, later become more specific in what your duties were to be with respect to the subject of chiropractic? Chiropractic was just one of many duties I had. Um, there was, in, at the time when I went into the Department of Investigation, an ongoing committee on quackery staffed by Robert A. Youngerman, a young lawyer who was in the Department of Investigation. I was not only uh, responsible for whatever he might do uh, or what the committee, I attended the committee meeting as an observer, as a participant, but he was the secretary of the committee and was responsible for performing what the committee was wanted him to do. In the meantime, I was responsible with other staff members in trying to ferret out all other kinds of health quackery, which was flourishing at that time, from psychic surgery in the Philippines to breast development in Florida to uh, the Spears Chiropractic Clinic in uh, Denver, uh, which claimed to be capable of curing cancer. Anything arthritis, the Mexican uh, clinics were uh, completely robbing the in incurable cancer and arthritis patients. I'd, li I'd like to be specific here now. Was Mr. Youngerman, while working for the existing Committee on Quackery, dealing with this, uh, the cancer problems and all these other quackery problems, or was the Committee on Quackery specially directed? The Committee on Quackery had a, had a chairman all who right. was responsible for the committee's meetings, uh, the conduct of the meeting. Right. And did that... Uh, Bob served him. Mr. Okay. Youngerman served and him. And did that committee on quackery involve itself with Mexican cancer cures or what have you? They were informed at every meeting on what we were doing. All right. uh, did the committee on quackery have a primary purpose? Through, uh, through the years it evolved that probably the greatest hazard to the public health was chiropractic and that if there was to be any emphasis by the committee placed on any single type of uh, 
health quackery or whatever it might be called, that, that, that it should be on chiropractic. And did other committees take care of other types of quackery? No, no. sir. You're certain of that? I'm certain of that. All right. Uh, would you uh, answer me, did Mr. Throckmorton ever uh, discuss with you that the purpose of the Committee on Quackery would be to oppose chiropractic inroads into workman's compensation? Oh, I'm, I'm sure that during his rather brief period at time as general counsel of the AMA after I went there, that we probably did uh, discuss that. Did you consider that as one of the purposes of the Committee on Quackery to prevent chiropractors from being covered by workman's compensation laws? To protect the public, to, to, to uh, protect the injured workman, yes. All right. And did you uh, consider it as one of your functions uh, in serving with the Committee on Quackery to oppose chiropractic inroads into health insurance? Did I oppose it? Yes. I opposed whatever the committee instructed me to oppose. I didn't know anything about chiropractic when I went to the AMA. I didn't know any for chiropractor from an antelope. All right. Uh, did, uh, did the committee ever instruct you to oppose chiropractic inroads into health insurance? It was discussed by the committee at, on several instances at times when I was an attending, when Bob, was staff, Bob Youngerman was staffing the committee. And I was aware of the fact that th this was one factor that we had to be aware of. Okay. Other than being aware of it, did you ever take any active steps to prevent chiropractors from being covered by insurance, health insurance policies? Later we did. Okay. Uh, did you personally take some steps? Yes, sir. I was involved with them. All right. Uh, can you recall what some of those steps were? At the invitation of the health insurance uh, Association, Association of America. Of America. Uh, we, we, the Committee on Quackery was invited to have a man meet and discuss with all of, or their medical insurance committee made up of physicians. Medical physicians? I think all of them were medical physicians. There may have been some DOs. And it was decided by the Committee on Quackery that Dr. Henry Feinberg, who lived in New York, and myself would meet with these people at the HIAA, Health Insurance Association of America headquarters in New York, and we did meet with them. Hey, did you help draft the HIAA uh, statement that you later interpreted to be as opposed to chiropractic uh, coverage by health insurance? Did I help draft it? Yes. I did not. I have was a I answered their questions whenever they asked me. All right. And did the language that you proposed ultimately end up in their statement? They wrote, know. they wrote two statements. One which was that the educational background of those who are providing health care coverage should be investigated. And uh, I think just generally that cult practitioners should not be covered. Okay. Did they ever mention the word chiropractic in any of their statements? In their second statement they added such as chiropractic. Was that at your suggestion? I suggested they needed a, an example of what they were talking about. And did you then have that statement published with a headline saying that it involved chiropractic? Did I have it published? Yes, in the AMA News or in an AMA. I, I don't control. I've published. never controlled the AMA News. Excuse me. Did you suggest that it be published by the American Medical I supplied it to the AMA News when they became aware of the fact that the HIA had taken a new position. All right. And they became aware of it because you told them about it. Is that correct? Somebody told them. It possibly was I was the one. All right. Now, there are a lot of people in the AMA News. Yes. Uh, did you discuss with Mr. Throckmorton uh, that one of your functions and that of the committee was to oppose chiropractic inroads into hospitals? 
I think we touched on the blues case. I think we touched on an old case in Iowa. Uh, but the chiropractic harassment that began later on and this hit or miss making application for membership for uh, admission to hospital staffs had not started at that time. Well, when did it start? Do you know? Oh, I would say 67, 66. It, Earlier there had been a few cases that's such as the two that I have referred to. And you regarded that as harassment? I regarded it later as harassment, certainly, All right. because the chiropractors had stated they did not need to send their patients to hospitals. All right. Uh, did the ones that were applying for hospital uh, privileges state that, do you know? I haven't any idea. All right. And uh, did you and Mr. Throckmorton discuss the fact that if chiropractors uh, were allowed to hospitalize patients, it would give a status and prestige to chiropractic that is neither necessary nor desirable? I don't believe we ever discussed that. Was that your feeling at the time? I don't know whether it was my feeling at the time or not. Okay. Did you discuss uh, with Mr. Throckmorton that the purpose of the Committee on Quackery and your, the focus of your activities would include containing chiropractic schools? That certainly it was to uh, contain chiropractic and to eliminate it as a public health hazard. Uh, the containment of their schools or the uh, attempts or well, the attempts to upgrade their schools so that they would become something that would that would be legitimately a provider of health care for the public uh, was a part of our consideration mm -hmm. did you oppose the upgrading of chiropractic schools certainly not did you take any steps to prevent chiropractic colleges from obtaining affiliations with state universities for their pre-chiropractic professionals training? We certainly did. Can you explain why? Because we thought they were, uh, <clears throat> in the first place we had some examples that were of absolute uh, ridiculous quality, such as the occurrence in Texas, where chiropractic students were attending at the same time a chiropractic school and a junior college, a public junior college, and receiving credit in both at the same time. Uh, the C.W. Post School, I'm not sure it's a college or a university on Long Island, uh, attempted to open its medical school training facility, at least pre-med, and probably the basic sciences to chiropractors. Was that a positive development, that the chiropractors would have a better uh, education by being affiliated with that pre-med program? It could have been, if they had known what to do with it. Uh, the, the physicians in New York said they wouldn't know what to do with it if they, if they were permitted. So what did the physicians in New York do? Uh, the physicians opposed it very, very strenuously. Okay. Was that at your urging? Absolutely not. I didn't, I didn't need to urge them. Excuse me. Was that at Dr. Feinberg's urging? I'm sure he was instrumental in... Was uh, Dr. Feinberg a uh, mm -hmm. superior of yours at the AMA? He was a, at the AMA? Yes. No. Was he a, a, a member of the Committee on Quackery? Yes. Um, and did uh, the subject of CW Post, uh, was that discussed at the Committee on Quackery? Yes. Can we get a time frame on the subject matter you're discussing? Yes, could you give us a time frame uh, when... Uh, you have the papers there, I don't. Uh, I, I'd just be guessing. <coughs> All right, uh, we'll put it in a time frame when I can get to the papers. Uh, now, um, did uh, Dr. Feinberg, to your knowledge, initiate the opposition to CW Post uh, allowing uh, pre-medical courses uh, in the pre-professional phase of their education to chiropractors? 
I'm sorry I don't know, but I'm sure somebody on the faculty or some of the positions in the medical school must have initiated it or he wouldn't have known of it. There's no reason why he would have known what was going on at CW Post out on Long Island. All right. And uh, do you know that, uh, do you know if, uh, in fact, CW Post then abandoned its program to, uh, uh, for uh, pre-professional training for chiropractors? I don't remember. Do okay. you know of any other instances where the uh, uh, Committee on Quackery uh, took steps to prevent chiropractors from having pre-professional training at state universities? Well, the uh, question assumes facts not in evidence and facts in which he has not testified. Right. I know of no other instances. Does the name Moorhead College in Kentucky mean anything to you? Well, I know what Moorhead College is, yes. Do you know if Moorhead College recommended a pre-chiropractic program of two years as a pre-professional training prior to chiropractors going to their professional schools? No, I did not know that. Okay. Was that the subject of Moorhead ever brought up at the Committee on Quackery meetings? Not, not to my recollection. Uh, do you recall ever discussing the subject of Moorhead College with Dr. Stevens? I do not recall ever discussing Moorhead College with Dr. Stevens. Do you know who Dr. Stevens is or was? I certainly do. Who was he? Dr. Stevens at that time was an orthopedic surgeon in Lexington, Kentucky. Was he a member of the Committee on Quackery? Uh, for a period, he was a member of the Committee on Quackery. Of the AMA? Yes. And in that respect, was he su uh, one of your... Uh, uh, superiors uh, since you worked for the Committee on Quackery? My first three or four years at the AMA, I did not technically work for the Committee on Quackery at all. I sat in on their meetings. I advised them as best when they needed my advice. I would assist them in any way that I could. But Mr. Youngerman was the secretary of the Committee on Quackery. And what was your position? I was director of the Department of Investigation with my hands more than full with right. other types of quackery as well as chiropractic. All right. Uh, in other words, the Committee on Quackery was separate from the other types of quackery you were dealing with? I have told you already that at all meetings they were briefed and brought up to date on all of the areas of quackery that this department was dealing with, and usually that briefing was by me. Okay. Which department? The Department of Investigation. All right. Was the Department of Investigation dealing with things other than the things the Committee on Quackery was dealing with? The, the things that were causing the public problems and rearing its uh, ugly head as ugly heads, rearing their ugly heads as potential, potentially harmful to the public, usually were brought to the department's attention at the AMA. Which departments? Department of Investigation. All right. Prior to its going to the committee, the committee met at first, once every six months, uh, there was no fixed schedule for a long time. <clears throat> Did uh, Mr. Throckmorton ever discuss with you that uh, the unification of the chiropractors into a single group uh, would increase uh, the threat to medicine? I'm not sure he ever discussed it with me. It was just an open fact. Uh, the chiropractors, which was impossible, if the mixers and straights could get together, nobody could get together with the ACA. All right. Uh, there was. It was so. Uh, they were so, so far out, in contrast to the ICA. Both of them, however, based on a totally false premise that all disease is caused by a subluxation <coughs> and cured by a spinal adjustment. But the ACA was trying, and in fact, in many, many, many thousands of cases, was practicing medicine, not chiropractic. So they, uh, so you, you considered that uh, the mixers might achieve their goal of emerging as medical men if uh, the AMA didn't do something about it? Uh, we, they would have destroyed themselves. They were killing off enough people, so it didn't make any difference. 
do you know how many they killed off? No, I don't know. In fact, didn't you search for the number of malpractice or deaths uh, attributable to chiropractic on numerous occasions? No, I don't ever remember searching for chiropractic deaths. Uh, isn't that something you'd want to know if you were uh, making a statement that they were killing off so many people? I usually did know. You did know? Uh, what was the figure you, you were able to come up with? I, I, I had no figure that I could give you. <coughs> Well, uh, did you ever... All I knew is when they got in trouble, they referred their patients to a physician and dumped them back where they should have gone in the first place. And in many cases, they, the physician was left with the job of correcting the harm done by the chiropractor. Now, who told you that? Every physician I, I've ever talked to. All right. And um, would it have been uh, useful scientific information to uh, put out a survey asking medical physicians to, to report to your committee to tell you how many patients had been killed by chiropractors? <coughs> it might have been. Uh, uh, we, we had two very separate and distinct cases that were uh, of deaths resulting from chiropractic, in our judgment at least, malfeasance, the death of the child in California and the death of the person in Florida. Okay, now you, you just said you had two. Very different cases. A okay. child, <coughs> cancer, an adult with some sort of a, I, I'm sorry, I can't remember the disease. I believe it was pneumonia or a lung disease that ultimately killed him. All right, can you, you name the third one? I'm sure there were many others. I know that, but uh, what's no, the answer I to my question? Look, you're asking me for things that uh, are 12 years ago. All right, well... 15 years ago, 20 years ago. Well, let me put it this way. Uh, from the time you took over, uh, began working for the AMA up until now, can you name a third death attributable to chiropractic? Can I name them? Yes. Jam around an article on while I was there. <laughs> In about 1982, uh, spinal fractures caused by chiropractic manipulation that resulted in, I believe, in that article, five deaths. All right. Do you know how many chiropractors there were uh, licensed in the in the United States when you went to work for the AMA? If you were to believe the Amer American Chiropractic Association's figures, I think their figure was 48,000. If you believe the ICA's figures, they were about 20,000. If you believed uh, the Department of Health, Education, and Welfare, they were about 16,000. Take your choice. Well, was there a difference between licenses and practicing chiropractors, do you know? If they were unlicensed and practicing, they were in three or four states and were being prosecuted as quickly as they could be found All right. at the state level. All right. Uh, were there any licensed that weren't practicing? I have no idea. All right. uh, I suppose they're running gas stations. They were before they went to school anyway. All right. And did you feel that uh, one of your goals was to stifle chiropractic schools? If, if chiropractic had not been so devious in the way it was trying to do things. It was just totally false. They were bringing in people with degrees from Lebanon and uh, Iraq and Iran. And, uh, you mean medical degrees? I'm talking about PhDs who were teaching the basic sciences and that sort of thing. Uh, we found many false degrees. We found that people were being admitted to school who had not even finished high school, admitted to chiropractic colleges who had not even finished high school. In one survey made by Mr. Youngerman prior to my coming to the AMA, uh, there was every reason to believe that uh, that, that the whole thing was a charade. All right. And so what's the answer to my question? Well, I, Do you think you, it was your duty to help stifle chiropractic schools? 
stifle is a, is a word I don't exactly know what stifle means to retard uh -oh. at, at the level at which they were teaching people and misleading young uh, America's young people I would say yes I would agree with we should stifle their college the AMA should have attempted to stifle their college. And did uh, Mr. Throckmorton use that language in your presence at any time? Not that I recall, no. All right. In reading Exhibit 172, uh, did you notice that uh, you said that action undertaken by the medical profession should be, among other things, directed toward the stifling of chiropractic schools? I probably read. I'm sure I read it. I read, I read that paper. Did you disagree with that? No. All right. <clears throat> Did uh, Mr. Throckmorton <laughs> ever tell you that the actions of the Committee on Quackery should be behind the scenes whenever possible? I think that's true of every committee of every medical organization <coughs> in the world. Why is that? This is, this is a, an organization that has business to transact within, within its organization. Well, Does your law, law firm share all its information with a competing law firm? No, I'm, I, uh, but uh, the actions you were taking were not in the committee room if you were going to stifle chiropractic schools. Is that correct? The action we were going to take, and did in fact take, was to approach the Department of Education to find and discover that there had been year after year applications by either the ACA or the ICA or both, and that consistently they were for accreditation and consistently they had been denied by the Office of Education. And did the AMA take active steps to oppose accreditation for any chiropractic college? Anyone in particular? All. Any or all. You said any, any chiropractic college. Yes. Yes, the AMA appeared uh, at an accreditation hearing in Washington before the Accreditation Committee of the Office of Education <coughs> at, at the request of the Office of Education and to support documented materials that we had sent to them at their request on chiropractic. Dr. Tom ba Thomas Ballantyne appeared and I was with him. Uh, what is your understanding of the purpose of accreditation? Accreditation is to recognize the quality not only of, of the faculty, uh, but of the facilities. And in, in, in the case of anybody, any group seeking accreditation for the ability to provide health services to the public, whether they had equipment, uh, teaching facilities, adequate, good teaching facilities, whether their entrance requirements were high enough to get something better than non-high school graduates or gas station operators, not that there's anything wrong with a gas station operator, but he shouldn't be admitted to medical school unless he passes a medical school examination. Um, there were many organizations who were, think, who were trying to get accreditation similarly to the chiropractor. Let this, me, I'm sorry, I don't want to interrupt some, your answer. Some of them very expertly met all of the guidelines necessary uh, as drawn up by the, drawn by the Office of Education and did in fact receive accreditation. Uh, at the time when Dr. Ballantyne and I appeared before the Committee on Accreditation, whatever year that was, and I don't remember, uh, the chiropractors quickly withdrew, both chiropractic organizations quickly withdrew their, their applications. applications. Okay, now I've got to have uh, a better understanding of what you believe accreditation is. Were they seeking certification of an accreditation agency? Yes. Okay. Now, 
is it your uh, understanding that an accreditation agency then in turn creates standards toward which schools try to achieve uh, compliance? All within the framework of the guidelines of the Office of Education uh, section on accreditation. I believe that's does the designation. Does the existence of an accreditation agency ordinarily motivate institutions to improve their standards to meet the accreditation standards? I don't know. Is that the purpose of it? Uh, the purpose of it is to, uh, in my judgment at least, is to be a, a watchdog to see that that they maintain the standards that are required by the Office of Education. All right. Now, uh, just so we're clear, just because there is a poor hospital doesn't mean there shouldn't be a joint commission on accreditation of hospitals. Isn't that correct? I don't know what you're talking about. All right. Just because there is, do you know what the North Central Accreditation Agency is? Does that mean anything? Yes. Okay. Uh, it, accredits, it accredits colleges? Yes. Okay. Just because there's a poor college somewhere doesn't mean there shouldn't be a North Central Accreditation Agency, does it? No, I assume the North Central Accrediting Agency would not accredit that poor college. Hall. All right. And just because there is a poor hospital someplace doesn't mean there shouldn't be an accreditation agency for hospitals, does there? I don't know. All right. I have nothing to do with, with All right. accreditation. Policy. Why did you oppose an accreditation agency for chiropractic colleges? Because we thought the chiropractic colleges were so poorly staffed, so poorly equipped, that their entrance requirements were so absurd that it would be it would destroy. And I think you'll find those words in Dr. Ballantyne's comments made before the accrediting committee. It would destroy the, the integrity of the accrediting process. All right. Uh, did you know what the standards for accreditation were that were being proposed by the chiropractic uh, accreditation agencies? I may have, but I should, certainly do not remember them. And right. I don't know that I ever did know. Them. All right. You just opposed an accreditation agency for chiropractic colleges, period on the basis of information we had on the quality of the chiropractic colleges were, that were seeking that accreditation. Okay. Uh, do you understand that an accreditation agency uh, serves to foster uniformity of educational programs? No, I don't know what the, uh, how they foster unification of... Uniformity. Of uniformity. All right. Now, you said that the chiropractors were hiring PhDs from Lebanon and Iraq, any other countries? I think Iran. Iran? And uh, you felt that was poor policy, is that correct? I didn't think it was poor policy if those people were qualified. Okay. Now, did the American Medical Association have a ban on medical physicians teaching in chiropractic colleges? Do you know? The the AMA's opinions and reports, the principles of medical ethics, which are the guidelines for the physician members, state association, and constituent county societies who like, if they want to adopt them, that's their privilege. These are just guidelines for them on what the AMA considers, the AMA representing all of states, groups of physicians, what the AMA considers as, uh, I'm sorry, I've forgotten your question. Did the AMA uh, declare it to be unethical for a medical physician to teach in a college of chiropractic? Those principles said it was, un it was uh, that, that a physician should not associate professionally. At first it said they should not associate with them professionally at, with, with cultists. And then later there was a statement that they should not associate professionally with chiropractors. 
And did you consider, were you the author of that statement, by the way? I was at least in part author of, okay. the, of the latter statement. And did you consider when you were drafting that statement that uh, teaching in a chiropractic school was a professional association between medical physicians and chiropractors? That was not a decision made by me. I did not have to even have to consider it. That may, it was made first by the committee, and the Judicial Council reviewed it. The Board of Trustees of the AMA reviewed it. It was adopted by the House of Delegates, which represents, which is made up of one physician for every 10,000 members of the AMA in each state. All right. And was the decision made, to your understanding, that it was unethical for a medical physician to teach in a college of chiropractic? It was interpreted by the Judicial Council, I believe, that it was unethical, that that was professional association. The teaching in a chiropractic college. Right. Okay. Now, do you know if a PhD that was educated in the United States who taught in a chiropractic college could then be employed in an American medical school? As far as I know he could, if he was qualified. Would he have been deemed to be unethical? No, he was not a chiropractor. All right. Could a medical physician pathologist who taught in a chiropractic college? Not your, possible. Not possible? Why is and that? I'm aware of. Why? Because it was unethical? A pathologist is, a, is an MD. All right, and, and so you're saying it's not even possible that an MD could teach in a chiropractic college? I see no reason for it, and I also know that it, that it had been held that uh, teaching in a chiropractic college did amount to professional association. And that was unethical? That was what well, was stated in the <clears throat> Principles of Medical Ethics of the AMA as guidelines for the physician. All right. If he wanted to violate those guidelines, that was his privilege. Mr. Uh, Taylor, has. Uh, are, you're still a member of the Iowa Bar. I think you're a member of any bar after you once passed the bar okay. and for life. Has the Iowa Bar Association ever declared that you were unethical? No. Would you be bothered if they did? Certainly. Why? Because I'm not unethical. Well, then what difference would it make if they declared you to be unethical or not? I, I don't know what you're driving at, Mr. McAndrews. Would you? Object I am not unethical. Okay. I don't know what the Iowa Bar Association could find in me that was ever unethical. But it wouldn't make any difference to you, would it, if they found you to be unethical? It certainly would. Can you tell me why? Because it would be a stigma to my name. And there are no stigmas to my name. I have nothing in my closet. Do you think a, a stigma? Did you say S-T-I-G-M-A? Right. And is that disparaging to you to be called unethical? Certainly. And do you think that you would suffer in the eyes of your peers if you were declared to be unethical? I, I know I would suffer. Okay. Do you think your family would look down on you if you were publicly declared to be unethical? I have no idea whether my family... I don't think my family would, but All right. I think it would hurt them. You think it would hurt them? Yes. In what manner? In their pride, in their father, All right. their husband. All right. Uh, could we take a break now for five minutes, please? And we'll go off the record now at 1032. We're back on the record at 1049. Mr. Taylor, uh, You've been down here since approximately 1980. Uh, are there many chiropractors in the Phoenix area? Do you know? I have no idea how many there are. I know they do a tremendous amount of advertising. All right. Uh, do you have any friends that go to chiropractors? Not to my knowledge. All I'm right. sure there must be some who do. They don't know any better down here. All right. Anything goes. <clears throat> have any of your friends been killed by any chiropractors? Do you know? Not that I know of. Not that you know of. Uh, they sell Lairtro down here, sell DMSO down here. They do anything down here. All right. Anything goes. And um, so from 19, well, never in your life have you ever been to a chiropractor. Is that correct? Right. Uh, never in your life have you ever been to a chiropractic school. Is that correct? Yes. And there was a National College of Chiropractic uh, in a uh, suburb of Lombard uh, immediately adjoining Chicago or close by, was there not? Yes. Um, 
when you were reviewing uh, the subject matter that you were charged with containing and eliminating, did it ever occur to you that it would be useful for you to um, visit a chiropractic college? Just the former question. If you're referring to, was he referring to you being chiropractic? Would you answer the question, please? Would you repeat the question, please? Uh, you, uh, I believe you stated that when you came to the AMA, you reviewed files on chiropractic, did you? Oh, in the course of time, I did. All right. At any time <coughs> since your, the charter of the Committee on Quackery was to contain and eliminate chiropractic, it was not to eliminate chiropractic. It was to eliminate chiropractic as a hazard to the health of the public. All right. Now, I'd like to hand you Plaintiff's Exhibit 188. And uh, would you put that before you, please? And is, are you the author of Plaintiff's Exhibit 188? I notice it says, from H. Doyle Taylor to uh, Albert Howard, I believe it is, MD, Executive Vice President. It's dated November 8, 1972. I may have been, but this, uh, if, if this were my memorandum to Dr. Howard, who at that time was, I believe, Executive Vice President, I would have initialed it, and it is not initialed. All right, I don't well, know whether this is a false document or not. All right, it you was, have some false documents. I do have some false documents? Yes, you have documents that I haven't had nothing to do with. Well, just because you had nothing to do with Nor them. Nor did my department. All right. Uh, this was produced to us by the AMA. Let me, uh, and it does have your name on it, let me direct your attention uh, to the fourth paragraph down. Do you see it? Yes. And let me read that. This is so because when the AMA Board of Trustees established the Committee on Quackery in 1964, it was made emphatically clear that the prime mission of the Committee on Quackery was and is to contain chiropractic and, hopefully, eliminate it as a recognized health care service to the people. Is that, was that your understanding of what the Board of Trustees made emphatically clear? Yes, sir. If that's, that's what it says here, that's what I understood. Okay. And was it your understanding that that was a completely necessary and proper assignment to the Committee on Quackery? I certainly do. All right. Okay, then uh, in the next paragraph, uh, the last sentence, it says, We believe that without the full attention of the Committee on Quackery, the results in recent years could have been disastrous to the quality health care of the public we all are seeking. Was that your understanding? Yes. Okay. Then it's the next paragraph, and I, what I'm looking for here is trying to find, divide up responsibilities for the various quackery uh, goals of the AMA. It says, we believe also that the assignment of chiropractic to the Committee on Quackery was proper within the priorities of the AMA with basic responsibility for such other overlapping quackery prone areas as fluoridation and food and nutrition assigned to other committees and councils of the AMA. Uh, was that your understanding? Yes. All right. And then it says you sought and obtained broad-based support for the AMA position. Is that correct? Yes. Now, have you seen or did you... Uh, uh, Where does it say it, that we sought and obtained? Well, it says in the last paragraph, in attempting to fulfill its mission of combating chiropractic, the Committee on Quackery has sought and obtained broad-based support for the AMA position from virtually all of the scientific community, but more importantly from government agency and numerous national organizations from outside medicine. Is that true? Yes. Okay. Now, I'm not certain you were the author of it, but there is testimony in the case that uh, it may have been Mr. Monahan said it, and there's a document, I believe, uh, that uh, almost 600 organizations were approached to uh, have them adopt either the AMA statement on chiropractic or something similar to it. Is that correct? All of the medical specialties that were that the AMA recognized as a medical specialty and we had a 
directory of medical specialties, except possibly pediatrics. All of those who would treat, normally be treated by or be subjected to treatment by chiropractors. All of those organizations were sent a copy of the policy statement that was adopted by, at the request of the Board of Trustees by the AMA House of Delegates, and with the suggestion that they might want to consider adopting a similar statement or endorsing the AMA's position. I don't know whether there were 66 or 45 or what number there were in that directory of medical specialties. All right, that's the directory of medical specialties. Uh, do you have any idea if 600 organizations were approached, whether they were medical organizations or not? I would think the number would be considerably high. 600 would be considerably high. All right. And I don't know how many were approached. And out of that, of the total number, how many adopted policy statements in response to the AMA's request? Essentially all of them. You had uh, hundreds of uh, groups that agreed with your position? Yes. Okay. It, was there any uh, listing of those hundreds of groups anywhere? There, were, there was a listing of the principal groups in uh, a leaflet published by the AMA, produced by the Department of Investigation, called What They Say About Chiropractic. Now, how many statements were in that? Uh, about a dozen? They were the major ones, the major organizational statements, All right. such as ATW, such as the National Council on Senior Citizens, uh, the Consumer Federation of America, AFL-CIO, Were there any statements from any source on chiropractic that the AMA did not uh, initiate or seek? Objection to form. <clears throat> it's vague. Yeah, All right. Um, were, did you receive any statements on chiropractic, to your knowledge, that weren't in response to your request that the organization adopt a position on chiropractic? I at no time asked them to adopt a position. I asked them to consider adopting a position on chiropractic or endorsing the AMA statement. And did you send them a copy of the AMA statement? I certainly did. And were most of the people that you <coughs> sent the statement to medical physicians? No. Okay. Were most of the statements that you received back from medical organizations? Uh, you would have to define medical organizations uh, first for me to try to even answer the question. I'm not sure I could answer it then. Because there were so many non-medical organizations in the, in the strict sense of practicing medicine. If that's what you're talking about, we probably had more statements from non-medical groups than we had from medical groups. And there should be a listing of those someplace, is that correct? I have no idea where it happened to the file. I haven't been to the AMA office since 1975. All right. Now, were, was the AMA concerned about the encroachment of chiropractic into the <coughs> field of medicine? We were concerned about the activities of the American Chiropractic Association and the harm it was doing by uh, attempting to masquerade as a separate and distinct health care service for the people. Mm -hmm. uh, we later became equally concerned that the International Chiropractic Association's charade, similar charade, of masquerading as a and complete and independent health care service for the, for the people. Was the uh, American Medical Association, to your knowledge, concerned that uh, members of the public were substituting uh, chiropractic services for medical services? I, every physician that was worth his salt had more patients that he could handle anyway. Why would he want these people? 
if they were going to chiropractors anyway. If, as Justice Holmes once said, if they're dumb enough to go to a chiropractor, go to a chiropractor, they should suffer the consequences. And uh, you were al uh, willing to allow them to suffer the consequences? We were trying to prevent those consequences from occurring. Mm -hmm. And uh, did you know if uh, the reputation of chiropractors was uh, growing among the population in general? I, during the time that I was working at the MA, I would have suggested to you that the reputation of the chiropractors was going steadily downhill. All right. Did the AMA, to your knowledge, participate in a survey of high school seniors uh, to determine uh, the best source of help for a painful back injury? I don't recall any such survey. Well, let me uh, identify as uh, Plaintiff's Exhibit 5000. I don't think we'll overlap if we do that. A Medical economics uh, publication from July 11, 1966. And I'll call your attention to the bottom of the page 44 attached and see if that refreshes your recollection. Does that refresh your recollection that uh, the AMA uh, participated uh, in a nationwide survey? I have no knowledge of this or any survey of any such type that was ever made. Okay, does that information surprise you? Objection to form and foundation. Answer anyway. It's no objection. The information contained at the bottom of page 44. Yes, the information regarding high school uh, seniors uh, belief that a chiropractor is the best source of help for a painful back. Or at least the statement. I don't know if it was it as information. It does not correct. say it was made by the AMA to begin with. It said it was made through the AMA. I don't know whether it was made through the AMA or not. I have no idea. But I, I think you are misquoting the statement. I don't think the AMA made the survey. It says public health service and other groups. It says the AMA public health service and other groups. It says through the AMA, comma. All right. Could we clarify the record that medical economics is not and has not been a publication associated with the American Medical Association? Well, I don't know what association means. They, they, don't, they don't publish it. They may well they don't get sponsored. They don't send it around. All right. Well, let me ask you, was it your understanding that any segment of the American public believed that chiropractors were the best source of uh, help for certain types of musculoskeletal conditions? Any segment of the population? Yes. Apparently there must have been a segment of the, pop of the population who were gullible enough to uh, go to, to accept the chiropractor chiropractic enticements into their offices for whatever. Did any medical physician ever tell you uh, that uh, they believed chiropractic care, all or any portion of it, was beneficial for musculoskeletal conditions? I assume you are referring to Dr. Henderson, um, possibly other ones, others, who have said that manipulative therapy can be a valid method of treatment for strains and sprains after proper diagnosis and if it is done by a person who is qualified to do it. Okay. And did Dr. Henderson, who was he? Dr. Henderson was a, a Colorado physician at the time I first knew him. He went into the service and came back and was elected to the board of the AMA. And a trustee? At the Board of Trustees of BMA, and later went to a regional medical uh, 
organization in New Did Mexico, he, I believe. What was his reputation as a medical physician? Do you know? No, I don't know. It, was he an orthopedic surgeon? I don't know. I don't even know what his specialty was. Was he a professor at the University of Colorado? I, I think he taught at Colorado. The medical school there? I think so. And did he inform you that he taught his uh, students how to compete with chiropractors? I have read the pa a paper that he wrote while in the service in, in which he a hand picked group of <coughs> Navy personnel were treated for strains and sprains by manipulative therapy uh, and that a chiropractor was involved with that treatment by that group, hand-picked group of Navy personnel. And in that paper he suggests that manipulative, manipulative therapy may have some value in the armamentarium of medicine if the person who is using it knows how to make a differential diagnosis and knows when to use manipulative therapy and how to use manipulative therapy. But it should be restricted to sprains and strains. It should not be uh, to go beyond that point, I believe, was his right. conclusion. Do you recall whether he mentioned the use of uh, chiropractic manipulation uh, on pregnant women? I think there's some reference to pregnant women, but I don't. I think he said not to use chiropractic like pregnant women, but I'm not certain. It's been many years since I've read Dr. Henderson's report, which he asked not to be published. All right, uh, let me uh, see if this refreshes your recollection. I'll hand you Exhibit 241 and call your attention to page six. Uh, the first full paragraph and ask you if that refreshes your recollection as to his viewpoint regarding the use of ma uh, chiropractic manipulation on pregnant women. He says that in uh, <clears throat> in cases of pregnant women that manual manipulation have given them some relief in his experience and he would like to add that they also uh, do other things that may have had the same effect. I don't think he attributes it entirely to manipulation, but he does say in the third trimester that manipulation can possibly be a benefit to a pregnant woman. And uh, in fact, does he say uh, that unrelenting back pain in the third trimester of pregnancy is one of the prices that it paid for the perpetuation of the race? and that he had learned from personal experience that general manipulation of backs in this particular condition has given these women a great deal of physical relief yes, that's and what has I permitted them to go on to term and deliver without having to be bed fast during the latter term of this pregnancy. I would suggest you read the remainder of that paragraph, however, where he makes some qualifications. I, I understand. I'll, I'll accept whatever is on that page. Uh, was that uh, of any interest to the medical physicians uh, on the committee on quackery that chiropractic manipulations helped relieve pregnant women in the third trimester of unrelenting pain. May, may I see the document again? I yes. don't believe he said chiropractic manipulation. I think he said manipulation. All right. he, I don't think the word chiropractic is in that paragraph. Is the uh, subject of his report generally chiropractic manipulation? It is not. It is manipulative therapy. Okay. Where did he receive, uh, excuse me, who was doing the manipulation on Guadalcanal? I have no idea. Was it a chiropractor? How, how would I know? I wasn't well, on Guadalcanal. Let me see the report. Was it your understanding that this report was a result of his service on Guadalcanal? It was a result of his service in, in the Navy. 
but I'm not sure it was on the Guadalcanal. Okay, do you know who he was utilizing for the manipulations in his study here? I know there was a chiropractor involved, right. and that he uh, said uh, manipulative therapy methods when under his direction and his uh, orders were effective and that uh, they were they were helpful to, to, to the Navy personnel as long as they were confined to strains and sprains. Okay. But yeah. I would admit to you, and I think it's important that it be inserted here, that medicine has never, and I do mean never, opposed manual manipulation. Did it the opposes the, the theory that all human diseases are caused by a subluxation and are, all human diseases are cured by a spinal adjustment, which is the chi basic chiropractic theory from day one. Excuse me. Did the AMA ever make a distinction between the chiropractor who was an extremely competent uh, spinal manipulative therapist and the chiropractor uh, who holds this theory that uh, you just recited? There was no way of, if, if your house is built of cards, it's going to tumble. It has no foundation. The foundation for chiropractic was that all human disease is caused by a subluxation and can be cured by a spinal adjustment. Yeah. Did There's the, no way that you could build a health service on a foundation as faulty as that premise is. All right. Uh, did the... Uh, American Medical Association at any time, to your knowledge, ever publish any document that would lead pregnant women to believe that spinal manipulative therapy, particularly during the third trimester, was beneficial for the relief of pain? I happen to know, Mr. McAndrews, uh, of personal knowledge that my wife received back rubs regularly, not just in the third trimester, not in the second trimester, or just in the second trimester, but regularly when she was pregnant. Are you under the impression that a chiropractor gives back rubs? If that's all they did, they'd be all right. Okay. Could you answer the question, please? Do I understand that they gave you back rubs? Yes. I think manipulation is... Uh, is an extreme form of a back rub. Do you, uh, is it your statement that your wife received spinal manipulative therapy? No. Okay. I said she received manipulation. Okay. And you said that was a back rub? That's what I categorized it as a back rub. Uh -huh. I, maybe I should have categorized it as a massage. Would a that massage. be more helpful to you? Oh, yes. I'm sure it will. Um, do you know if the American Medical Association ever published anywhere? that spinal manipulative therapy would be beneficial to pregnant women in the third trimester of pregnancy to relieve them of the unremitting pain of pregnancy. To my knowledge, they never published it. Do you think, uh, in view of Dr. Henderson's report, that that would have been useful information for obstetricians and pregnant women? It was not for me to decide, first, if it would be useful or not. Second, he had uh, recommended in his paper, if I remember correctly, that the sample and everything that he had in this paper was not large enough or worthwhile for publication. Mm -hmm. Did the Committee on Quackery decide not to publish the Henderson Report? The Committee on Quackery decided not to do anything with the Henderson Report, because that was, a, in essence, what Dr. Henderson had asked us not to do. Did the Committee on Quackery ignore the question of whether chiropractic treatment had any health benefit at all? No, I don't think it ignored it. All right. Plaintiff's Exhibit 240 is a Committee on Quackery minutes for May 13, 1966. And Doctor, in the first paragraph... Mr. I'm sorry. Mr. what? I think you referred to him as Dr. Oh, and Dr. Mr. Thompson. Please excuse my interruption. Excuse me. Who was Dr. Thompson? Dr. Thompson at one time was chairman of the Committee on Quackery. <laughs> All right. The first, uh, second full paragraph on the first page says, Dr. Thompson raised the question of the type of approach the committee should take in the future in regard to the chiropractic problem. 
May I have the date of that, please? Yes, it's May 13th, 1966, and your name is on it. As attending the meeting? Yes. Okay, he goes on, he says, he stated that in the past, we more or less have ignored the question of whether chiropractic treatment has any health benefit at all. Does that refresh your recollection of whether or not the Committee on Quackery ignored any benefits of chiropractic treatment? It's according to what you're calling chiropractic treatment now. If, if, manipulative, if we're talking about manipulative therapy, the committee in no sense ever ignored it. Dr. Stevens, in fact, used it extensively in his practice as an orthopedic surgeon. You have had Dr. Henderson relating how he used it. There are literally thousands of orthop orthopedic surgeons in the United States who use manipulative therapy when it is indicated after a differential diagnosis, which a chiropractor is not qualified to make. Who told you that? He does not have the tools nor the mechanism to do it to begin with. Who told you that thousands of orthopedic surgeons use manipulative therapy? At one time or another. Who told you that? Oh, I'm sure Dr. Stevens told me. I'm sure that others on the committee have told me that. That they use the types of manipulative no, therapy? No, I didn't say that. Referred to by Dr. Henderson? I didn't say that at all. I didn't say anything that, that constitutes chiropractic spinal adjustments. Okay. Did you ever uh, ask a chiropractor to show you what a chiropractic spinal adjustment was? No, I have not. Do you know what a chiropractic spinal adjustment is? Vaguely. Vaguely? Okay. I am not a physician. All right. Uh, did you ever hear anyone, uh, by the way, did this refresh your recollection that Dr. Thompson did raise the issue of whether or not they should be selective in the attacks on chiropractic? Object to the point. If there's any use of the word attack. Can you answer the question? At no time did, did the AMA ever attack a chiropractor. All right. The AMA attacked, if you're going to call it, if that's your word, attack. All right. In the context of an educational program to protect the public, we, uh, we did, in fact, become critical of chiropractic. We were not picking on the individuals. We never intended to pick on an individual. That's not, that was not our business. Our business was to protect the public from chiropractic. All right. You did, uh, it's your understanding, though, that the American Medical Association made it unethical to voluntarily associate professionally with a chiropractor. Yes, Is, sir. Okay. Because he was practicing chiropractic. Okay. Were there any chiropractors that they could voluntarily associate with? Check the yeah. form. <clears throat> Were there any chiropractors that they could voluntarily associate with? Yes, if they could serve on the same um, school board, uh, they could serve on if the uh, chiropractor were a driver of a garbage truck and somebody else was willing to work on that garbage truck, why they could work with him. All right. So it's, that's not professional. I that's what the statement of the AMA said. It's your understanding that if there were from 16 to 48,000 chiropractors, no medical physician could ethically associate professionally with any of those chiropractors. Is that That correct? was the AMA's statement and guideline that was distributed to state medical societies and members as the best way to practice medicine. All right. It was a guideline. It was not any rule that was laid down. It was not any law that governed. The state could adopt it or reject it. The county could adopt or reject the, the principle of medical ethics. All right. Um, state law might contradict it. And any medical physician was free uh, to be uh, unethical if he chose to be. Is that correct? Objection. One more question. I don't believe a physician wants to be unethical or ever wanted to be unethical. Okay. Isn't that the reason that you suggested that the AMA 
statement on chiropractic be incorporated into the Judicial Council opinions and reports? How do you know I suggested it? Did you not? I discussed it with Ed Holman, who was the Secretary of the Judicial Council. Okay, and what did, what, what did the discussion entail? Discussion entailed whether the existing principles of medical ethics that concern cultism was definitive enough. And was that discussion brought about because you had heard that some medical physicians were not equating chiropractors with cultism? It was not. It was brought about because the House of Delegates passed a policy statement that said exactly what chiropractic was. Uh, did you draft the policy statement? I assisted in the drafting of the policy statement. Why? Yes. When was this? 1966, wasn't it? Yes. Why did you draft or assist in the drafting of the policy statement? I was director of the department at the time. I was Bob Youngerman's uh, direct superior. I asked, the committee asked us, I was there to consider the drafting of a specific policy statement on chiropractic after I had discussed, had formed the committee in my discussion with Mr. Holman. Did you tell the committee that the existing policy statements weren't specific enough with respect to chiropractic? I, I'm sure I told, would have told him, or maybe Mr. Youngerman did, that that was included in the discussion with Mr. Holman. Right. And what made you believe that the existing policy statements weren't specific enough with respect to chiropractic? I didn't think that, uh, in the first place, uh, it's what I thought had nothing to do with it. Uh, it was what the committee thought. Um, I can assist the committee, and I can guide it, and I can help it, but I can't direct it. Uh, they thought that it was, it could be misunderstood that naturopathy had essentially gone away, nephropathy was existing on a thin thread, um, and that chiropractic was in, in deep trouble, and, uh, and was, at that time, the most signif significant hazard to the health of the people of the United States. So you wanted to make certain that the... I, I, what I wanted had very little to do with it. Excuse me, I thought you made recommendations to the committee on quackery. I did make recommendations. Okay. I and said we had, uh, we, we should have, I, I agree that we should have a statement on, on chiropractic. Okay, and the reason you made the recommendation to the committee on quackery was because you were the Committee on Quackery was targeting chiropractic, isn't that correct? The Committee on Quackery was interested in, in doing just this because it would, it would permit us to do things that we couldn't, we didn't seem capable of doing without having a specific statement that was the whole AMA spelling it out in simple language. All right. What things was that uh, that you weren't permitted to do before the statement that the statement allowed you to do? We had nothing specific as to the AMA stand on chiropractic per se. We needed something specific if we were going to try to do the job that, that the committee had asked us to do and that the AMA wanted us to do. Was that contain and eliminate chiropractic? Compa contain and eliminate chiropractic as a public health hazard right. or as a separate and distinct health care service. Okay. In fact, did you call the statement the necessary tool? I certainly did. Okay. And did you tell the committee that you needed a necessary tool to broaden the AMA's campaign? I may, I probably told the committee that, I, that we needed the statement to broaden the AMA's educational program on chiropractic. Uh, I'd like to go back to uh, the Committee on Quackery Minutes, Exhibit 240, page 2, where we were talking about... Uh, I don't think you gave a copy of it. I know it. I did not because I don't have a copy, but uh, I'll hand it to him in just a moment. The second paragraph says... This is of May 13, 1966. That's right. 
Dr. Thompson stated that he did not think the Committee on Quackery should be placed in the position of condemning everything the chiropractors do, such as manipulative procedures. He suggested this would only furnish them with additional ammunition for debate. Do you recall Dr. Thompson <coughs> expressing that concern? I don't recall it, but I, I, I can believe that he probably said it. All right. Did the Committee on Quackery ever develop a theme or a plan where they could condemn certain portions of chiropractic without condemning other portions of chiropractic? It wasn't possible to begin with. I mean, they're, they're all, I, if you would like, I will repeat it again. You, your house is built in quicksand. And if that house is going to stand, it's not possible to be built on quicksand. You cannot say that all human disease is caused by spinal misalignment and caused by a spinal subluxation caused caused by the spinal adjustment. Okay. Did you ever, uh, I've asked you earlier if you've ever visited a chiropractor or taken chiropractic treatments or gone to a chiropractic college. Have right. you ever right. talked to a chiropractor to your knowledge? Yes. When? At Ball State University in uh, the summer of about 1970, somewhere around there. And who was that? I haven't any idea. I can't remember what his name was. I was the speaker at the concluding conclusion of their summer school. They had a, a summer-long health program attended by about 600 students from all over the Midwest. And I was the speaker at their concluding banquet. And somewhere at, after I was introduced by the president of Ball State University, uh, the word chiropractic must have come out of my mouth because a man got up in the back and started talking. And it turns out that he was a chiropractor. He said he was? He said he was a chiropractor. He talked for about five minutes. I simply said to the man who had invited me to make the banquet speech, am I making this speech or is that man? And if he is, I'll go sit down and he can come up here. He asked the gentleman to sit down. Did you thereafter uh, discuss that incident with the Committee on Quackery? I sure did. And did they uh, suggest that uh, staff members should no longer make speeches? Absolutely not. Okay. They thought I handled it beautifully. All right. Did they ever uh, suggest that uh, medical physicians or AMA members not debate chiropractors? Yes. Why? Uh, it's it degrading for a physician to appear with a chiropractor. All right. Uh, now, I want to go back, and you said earlier that uh, Dr. Henderson's report was never made public, to your knowledge. Is that correct? I said it was not published. It was not published. Um, do you know of any other uh, matched trial of, manipula of spinal manipulative therapy uh, that came across your desk while you were at the AMA other than the Henderson report? Objective assumes that the Henderson report is such a match trial, and this witness okay. certainly has not said that that is the case, and the document is uh, inconsistent with that statement. All right. Uh, do you believe that every other patient that came in, one would go to the orthopedic surgeons and the other one went to the chiropractor? Is that your understanding of that report? Of what report? The Henderson report. That's the Henderson Exhibit report, 241. The Henderson Report was a hand-picked group of, uh, of Navy personnel on which they were going to use manipulative therapy. Right. I, don't, I don't see any separation of sending people to orth an orthopod or sending them to a, a chiropractor or anybody else in that report. All right. Um, there were, uh, on page two of the report, it says there were four orthopedic surgeons. Do you remember that? Report. No. This work was done by four reputable orthopedic surgeons. Do you see that halfway down? Uh, 
I, I see what he's saying, but that, that's right. not what he said. What you're saying is not what he says. Right. He said four, four orthopedic surgeons reviewed the results. Right, and on page four it says, I should say in addition that there was no attempt on our part to sell these patients in terms of manipulative therapy. They were selected on an alternative basis at random. Do you see that? First full paragraph on that page? Yes. Okay. Now, did you know of any other study while you were at the AMA where patients suffering musculoskeletal problems were randomly sent for orthopedic surgeon care or chiropractic care in a study of any sort? Okay. I would think that anybody who would, uh, would make such, such a suggestion would be subject to severe criticism. Okay, thank you. Uh, do you know if Dr. Henderson was ever severely criticized for this study? I don't know who, who ever saw that study other than uh, Mr. Throckmorton, the Committee on Clackery, myself, and my staff. Uh, in fact, uh, you didn't want it published, isn't that correct? He asked that it not be published. He said it is not in publishable form. All right. Isn't it a fact that the reason was it wasn't published is because Dr. O'Connor of the Committee on Quackery stated, quote, he commented that there would be a strong likelihood of Dr. Henderson's report being misconstrued if his position were made public. That's on the bottom of page two of Exhibit 240, Committee on Quackery Minutes for May 13th, 1966. Would you look at the last paragraph, please? You want to refresh your recollection to answer the question? Yes. Would you repeat the question, please, Mr. Reporter? Isn't it a fact that the reason it wasn't published is because Dr. O'Connor of the Committee on Quackery stated, <coughs> quote, he commented that there would be a strong likelihood of Dr. Henderson's report being misconstrued if his position were made public? That's not all the paragraph says. No, I understand that, but did he say that? Those are some That's of the... the so that wasn't the question. The question was, is that the reason why it wasn't published? No. That is not the reason it wasn't published. Why wasn't it published? It was not published because Dr. Henderson said it was not uh, appropriate to publish. All right. Uh, did Dr. Henderson suggest that there should be a... the AMA should sponsor a more detailed study? I believe there is a suggestion in his paper that that might be a good idea somewhere down the road for a study to be made. And did the Committee on Quackery then suggest to the House of Delegates that they promote such a study? No. Okay. Did the Committee on Quackery suggest that uh, obstetricians should be informed of Dr. Henderson's findings? No. Was the Committee on Quackery, to your knowledge, uh, uh, ever concerned that uh, uh, Dr. Henderson's report might be beneficial to pregnant women? I take for granted that they knew that every physician, an obstetrician, gynecologist, whomever was treating a pregnant woman, would know that a back massage is good for a pregnant woman. All right, thank you. Now. <sighs> The AMA uh, never made, excuse me, the Committee on Quackery never made any uh, use of the Henderson report uh, other than to discuss it at a committee meeting, did they? As far as I know, that was it. All right. In fact, that was your report to, Doyle, to uh, Bernie Hirsch in Plaintiff's Exhibit 552, was it not? I, that is my, I don't know how it happens not to be initialed, but I would assume that the memorandum was distributed, but I don't know that. Okay. 
Now the subject is the chiropractic report by Irvin E. Henderson, M.D. Is that what you referred to the Henderson report as? Sure. Okay, you considered the Henderson report a chiropractic report? It was, in fact, a chiropractic report. All right. And why were you submitting a copy to Bernie Hirsch? So he could be aware of it. All right. He happened to be general counsel of the AMA at that time. All right. You start out by saying, as you requested some time ago, we are sending you a copy of the Henderson report. Okay. That's the reason he got it. Do you know why he requested a copy of the Henderson report? I have no idea. Did you ever discuss what you were doing with, in the Committee on Quackery with Bernie Hirsch? Certainly. Did he know that the purpose of the committee was to contain and eliminate chiropractic? No, he certainly did not know that. Right. He knew that the purpose of was to contain chiropractic and to eliminate it as a health hazard or as a separate and, and complete health care service for the people. Okay. Now, have you seen documents where the health hazard is not immediately contiguous to the contain and eliminate statement? I have in one instance at least in a confi confidential memo. Okay. And that should never have gotten any further than All right. In fact, and it was that was not the intent of the memo to begin with. Have you found any document prior to November of 1972 where the health hazard is immediately contiguous to the contain and eliminate language. Either a health hazard or a separate and independent uh, health care service is, is, I think, in all statements. All right. You may have some that aren't, well, such as the one that you have there. Yes. Uh, These are internal memoranda. In fact, uh, everybody knew what we were doing. Let me ask you this question. Didn't you start adding that language after the publication of uh, In the Public Interest? I don't think we did anything after that ridiculous publication. Excuse me. I'm not commenting on the quality of the publication. I, sh I would suggest that you not. All right. After the publication of that book, did the Committee on Quackery not st start adding as a health hazard to its goals? No. Okay. It, it, long before that, we had used the words as a health hazard. In conjunction with the goal? Right. Okay. Have you found any document prior to November of 1972 that says that? Well, the I haven't. question assumes that he's made a search. Right. I haven't made any search for it. Any time I wrote it, with one exception, which was an, an error on my part, but it was a confidential memo, and they knew exactly. In fact, I discussed it with the board. All right. Exhibit 188, you'll agree with me that it doesn't have it in that uh, as the goal, right? language is not contiguous to the contain and eliminate. I would like to read to you the sentence, okay? All right. This is because when the AMA Board of Trustees established the Committee on Quackery in 19, 1964, it was made emphatically clear that the prime mission of the Committee on Quackery was and is to contain chiropractic and hopefully eliminate it as a recognized health care service to the people. Thank you. Excuse me. Man. Exhibit 464. Sorry. In the first paragraph, is the words as a health hazard included? Including the primary goal? It is not. All right. That's the one I made an error That's and explained to the January board. That's dated January 4th, 71. Yes, and I explained to the board the error. And 188 is dated November 8th, 1972. You explained to the board the error? The omission. The board knew what this was all about. Excuse me, when did you explain, is this the board of trustees of the The AMA? board of trustees through Dr. Howard and through it. All right. And you explained to the board that you had omitted part of the goal of the uh, Committee on Quackery? In the first draft of that, one, 
the secretary had left one of the com uh, the uh, committee members off. I asked the secretary to correct that somehow in the draft. The words in, in, in the transition period between the draft, the final, the draft, the final, again, again, and again, uh, the words were dropped. All right. And I explained that to Dr. Howard. Uh, did he question it? Not at all. I said the board will right. The board knows what you're, what you're doing. The board knew totally what a, you were doing. This was a confidential memorandum to the board. Mm -hmm. This is not going to the membership. This is not going to other departments. This is going to the board okay. on a confidential basis. Did you ever tell the membership that your goal was to contain and eliminate chiropractic? As a health care hazard? Yes. When did you tell them that? Many times. Uh, did you use that language? Yes. Okay. Where did you tell them that? At meetings where I was a speaker, at meetings we held uh, all around the country at regional conferences, our committee members would say it, I'd say it. Okay. Did you ever tell it to the, any of the other uh, medical society meetings that you attended? I certainly did. I think every one that I ever attended. Okay. Did you ever tell Mr. Stronick that of the American College of Radiology? I certainly did. Okay. Did you ever tell uh, anyone from the Joint Commission on Accreditation of Hospitals that that was your goal? No, I did not deal with the Joint Commission on Accreditation of Hospitals. Did Otha Linton, was that the name? Otha Linton, Otha Linton worked for the College of Radiology, I believe. All right. Did you ever tell Otha Linton that? I didn't, no. All right. Did you ever tell anyone from uh, the American Hospital Association that your goal was to contain and eliminate chiropractic? No. Okay. Well, what other medical societies did you tell that to, do you know? I don't think I ever told it to anybody that our goal was to eliminate chiropractic. Okay. Uh, did you ever tell them it was to contain and eliminate them as a health hazard? Yes. Okay. Over and over again. Which medical societies did you tell them that? Look, that's in the AMA policy statement that I distributed to every medical society in the United States. That it's to contain and eliminate? As a health care hazard. Okay. The words contain and eliminate are in that statement? Yes. The 1966 statement? Uh, yes. Plaintiff's Exhibit 464. I believe they are. All right. Plaintiff's Exhibit 464. Uh, in the first paragraph are the words, as a health hazard, contiguous to the contain and eliminate? This is the one we just discussed. Same one? Same one. All right. I just remembered I need four copies of it. I'm sorry. Judge Getzendaner, that's the delay. All right. Here is one, uh, Plaintiff's Exhibit 187, uh, Committee on Quackery Report to the Council on Long Range Planning and Development, dated April 9th, 1971. I hand you that. And uh, can you find, as a health hazard, contiguous to the contain and eliminate language? No, sir. I, I find, however, the elimination of chiropractic, chiropractic as a recognized health care provider, which right. is what we're saying, and you will find that in the final report by that joint, uh, by that study committee. Uh, exhibit 185A and 185C. I'm sorry, 185B and 185C. And 185B has a paragraph in it relating to 
Uh, it states the committee has not previously submitted such a report because it believes that to make public some of its activities would have been and continues to be unwise. Thus, this report is intended only for the information of the Board of Trustees. That's Plaintiff's Exhibit 185B. And 185C appears to be the same report with that paragraph missing. Do you know why that paragraph was taken out? We're comparing 185B and 185C. Where is the paragraph here? The second paragraph on 185B. What's this? No, that's not the one. Uh, one that's what you handed me. 185C does not seem to have that paragraph in it. I have no idea which one is the draft, which one was the one that was submitted to the board. There are no initials on here or anything. I, I don't even know where these came from. I, I knew I, I must have written them. Right. But this may have been a draft in, to which I added this paragraph, and this may have gone to the board. Okay. I don't know. You, there's no indication on here at all. Did uh, I'm not sure that this was even the final draft that went, because the uh, I, it's not initials. All right. Um, is that you, whose handwriting that's is mine. this? Doctor Denser. Denser, that's your handwriting yes. on 185A. Anyway, all right. Uh, did uh, Bernie Hirsch or anyone at the AMA ever tell you that they didn't want to inform the Board of Trustees about your reluctance to make public the activities of the Committee on Quackery? Did Bernie Hirsch ever tell me, or anyone at the AMA, tell you that they did not want the report to indicate that there was a reluctance to make public the activities of the Committee on Quackery? No, I don't think anybody ever told me that. Right. Was it your understanding that you didn't want the activities of the Committee on Quackery to be made public? There were certain activities of the Committee on Quackery which should not have been made public, and this was usually made the decision was made with full authority of the AMA. Okay. By full authority, what do you mean? The executive vice president or the board of trustees and or others. They told you not to make public... They would, there would not be any specific st uh, order for us to do or not to do anything. Well, it says... They would suggest to us this is an in-house document. That is an in-house document. I'm try I have tried to say that to you a half dozen times. This was a confidential memorandum to the memorandum to the Board of Trustees. This well, was to keep them informed. Did you draft this? I'm sure I did. Okay, the language is the committee has not previously submitted such a report because it believes that to make public some of its activities would have been and continues to be unwise. Was that true? Yes. Okay. What activities of the committee did you not did the committee not wish to have made public? Let me see that. Second I, need, I need to know the date. This is, this is draft 185B that you're passing through here. It's it's the packet of 185. I don't know. A through probably D. May I have his question read back to me, please? I'll be happy to read it again. What activities of the Committee on Quackery did the Committee on Quackery deem to be uh, deem it to be unwise to make them public? I think that's stating the reverse, but it, it, the meaning is, in my judgment, clear. We did not have the ammunition we needed to go public until about this time. The ammunition we needed was the Independent Practitioners Report by ETW, which condemned chiropractic in the most severe terms. The National Health Council's decisions, the National Federation, it'd be of thousands, the hundreds of other organizations that had condemned chiropractic. 
And we had a policy statement now from the AMA that was specific. Well, this is 1971 that that statement is, and the right. policy statement was 1966. Right. You didn't have any ammunition earlier than 1971? Yes, we had information, and we had some ammunition, and but it was accumulating very, very rapidly. Uh, but uh, prior to that time, you didn't want anyone to know that the AMA's hand was involved. Is that correct? I, I didn't care whether they knew what the AMA's hand was involved involved or not. Right. Everybody knew what we were doing. All right. If you're asking my personal opinion, which apparently Well, you are, apparently you hadn't submitted a report to the Board of Trustees prior to this date, is that correct? Normally a department head does not make reports to the Board of Trustees. All right, and here it says uh, you, it was the first progress report on developments Right. in a six-year period to the Board of Trustees? Right. So the Board of Trustees didn't realize what you were doing that during that six-year period? The Board of Trustees meets annually with uh, the chairman of the committee and the staff. Uh, the staff is totally responsible to the executive vice president who uh, keeps the board informed of everything that's going on. We met with the board on numerous occasions between 1966 and 1971. Were you there? I was at some of them. And did you hear the board uh, be told that the purpose of your committee was to contain and eliminate chiropractic? As a health hazard or as a separate and distinct health care service. Okay. And did you seek annual funding from the board based on that goal? There was a budget hearing for every department by a committee of the board. I usually attended that budget hearing with the chairman of the committee on quackery, after, particularly after Mr. Youngman left the department. All right. And at that uh, budget hearing, did you tell the, the committee or th of the board or whatever it was that the purpose of your committee was to contain and eliminate chiropractic? As a health care, as a health hazard, right. or as a separate and distinct uh, health care service. Okay. You told the board that your purpose was to eliminate chiropractic as a distinct health care service? As a separate and distinct and complete health care service, which is what you, you the chiropractors claimed. All right. Uh, you mentioned the uh, HEW study. Did you, were you involved in that HEW uh, study in any way? I don't know what you mean by involved. Well, did you, Were you involved? Well, did you, uh, did you know what the outcome was before the study took place? No. Did you ever make a, a, a statement that you were reliably informed of what the outcome of a government-funded study would be I've before made, the study took place? I've made statements that are similar to what you, you are misquoting me as, as having said. I have said that any objective study of chiropractic made by any person who does an objective study will find that chiropractic is a, ha a health hazard. Now, if that's what you're asking me, yes, I have made that statement. Uh, and did you take any steps to uh, see that that result came about? I tried. And what did that trying consist of? I, the Stanford Research Institute had done a study of California which said chiropractic was dying on the vine. That was some years before I went to the AMA. I went back to the Stanford Research Institute and asked them if they could get funding for... The Excuse me, I will start the sentence over again. Uh, that there probably was a need for a, another study of chiropractic, but it should be done at the national level, and it should be aimed at their educational cap uh, deficiencies or capabilities, and to the hazard that they pose, if so, if is it proven to be so, uh, to the health of the public. And I told him, in my judgment, there is no way that anybody who is objective is going to find that they are anything but a hazard to the health of the public. Agreed. And we will assist you in any way we can if Stanford Research decides it wants to make that study. Okay, did you tell anyone that the AMA's hand must not show? 
I'm certain that we, in our dealings with Stanford Research, we told either Dr. Roney or I can't remember the other man's name, that if the AMA uh, funded the study per se, it would be tainted uh, because if this study was not a totally unbiased, unprejudiced study, it would be worthless. It would be just as bad as having the car.